I would now like to turn the conference over to Shanika Morris, Statistics Editorial Assistant, Association of Research Libraries. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, I would just like to take a moment to welcome everyone to our web on, webinar, the Introduction to Climate Qual Light. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as mentioned, you know everyone's going to be muted to cut down on background noise, and of course we welcome your questions. Um, just don't forget to type them in, and um, ARL staff will stand ready to answer them. And as time permits, if time permits, we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So just a brief agenda for our call today. Um, I'm going to provide um, a brief introduction to Climate Qual. And um, then Dr. Paul Hanges is going to briefly discuss the theory and background of climate qual before sharing um, the findings of his um, analysis on the psychometric properties of climate qual light. And in closing, I'll discuss the survey administration protocol and how we um, share the results of the survey with survey participants. So let's get started. So, the Climate Qual Assessment measures staff perceptions concerning the library's commitment to the principles of diversity. Um, we share, it, it studies staff perceptions concerning organizational policies and procedures, and it also looks at staff attitudes. And the goals of the Climate Qual Project are to develop a tool that assesses the health of a library. Um, we, with Climate Qual, we at ARL wanted to look at whether or not the policies and procedures and practices of the library are supporting the library's mission and facilitating meeting current and future um, customer needs. And so Climate Qual takes a snapshot of a library's internal climate at a specific point in time to get a sense of the health of the library's climate. Um, and libraries by participating in Climate Qual can place their results in context by comparing their results to the anonymized normative data. And we also engage the Climate Qual community of current and past participants to create a forum where libraries can share experiences and intervention. Um, another aspect of Climate Qual that's enumerated in these goals um, is our desire to track changes in libraries over time. And um, in so doing, the climate qual data are therefore longitudinal so that we can analyze the effectiveness of the interventions over time. Um, and at the end of the day, climate qual helps libraries empirically validate the library's climate for diversity and the resulting data allow libraries to validate the healthy um, organization theory. And so here's a screenshot of the Climate Qual website. Um, and you can go to that website um, to find out a lot of information about um, the survey. And our FAQs are quite extensive because um, we know that people have a lot of questions um, before they uh, you know, decide to administer the survey. Um, we do have a lot of information on the website. However, um, the survey itself is not publicly available, and the survey is not distributed in advance of survey administration. Um, and this is done to guard against response bias, as knowing the questions in advance will affect participants' answers at the time of surveying. Um, however, if you do um, want to see a little preview of um, some of the questions that are included in each scale, we do have two sample questions per scale on the website, and we also provide in-depth descriptions of each of the scales of the survey. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Paul Hanges, um, who will be discussing a little bit about the theory and background of climate qual, and then also discuss um, some of the statistical properties of climate qual light. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you, Shaniqua. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Paul Hanges. Um, 
I am a professor of organizational psychology at the University of Maryland in College Park. I am part of the um, group in the psychology department known as SDOS, or Social Decision and Organizational Sciences. And I've been working with ARL for, oh, for a while now as we're developing and improving the Climate Qual survey. Unlike other diversity surveys that are out there, um, the climate qual is actually based upon a theory that we developed trying to explain how some organizations are healthy and how other organizations have certain problems. Uh, I'll define what I mean uh, by healthy in a little bit, but the main idea with regard to climate qual is it measures various climates of organizations trying to determine if they have the right atmosphere, if you will, to facilitate um, the organization meeting the needs, the current needs, as well as the future needs of its customers. Now on the slide ahead, we have a definition of what organizational climate is. It's an interpretive framework shared by employees regarding the priorities of their organizations, and it helps them understand what behavior of the employees will be rewarded, what behavior is supported by the organization, and what behavior is expected in the organization. This particular definition of organizational climate was made by Ben Schneider, and I cite his 1990 uh, chapter where he talks about um, what organizational climate is. And the reason why it's important is, as you see in the definition, organizational climate, when, it is, when it's clear and str sends a strong message, tells people what they need to be doing. And if they do that behavior, the organization will be behind them and reward them for their efforts. And what we found is that, sure enough, when an organization has a clear and consistent message, as emphasized by organizational climate, the organization can be shown to outperform its competitors. So organizations that actually have a climate for productivity actually produce more and are more competitive than their other organizations producing the same product that have a lower climate for productivity. In hospitals, uh, hospitals that have a climate for safety actually have fewer patient accidents and a lower patient death rate than hospitals that do not have a climate for safety. In our particular case, we identified various climates that organizations need in order to be maximum on satisfying customers in terms of what the customers need in terms of library resources, the kinds of uh, methodology they want to use to access these resources, both in terms of their current needs and anticipating what their needs will be in the future. Now we get information about organizational climate from actual employees. And so the question comes about is like, where do these employees derive their organizational perceptions? And it turns out that we get these perceptions because, well, first of all, we're human. And we always are trying to make sense of our environments. And it's a natural tendency of humans to talk to each other and try to understand their environment. Well, in organizations, one of the big factors that determine environments are in organizations' policies, practices, and, and procedures. Um, and so employees talk to each other to try to understand what are the messages being sent in terms of a particular policy, a particular practice, and a particular procedure that's endorsed and actually enforced in an organization. It's from this sense-making that employees then understand 
if they do a certain behavior, then the organization will reward them, support them, and indeed that behavior is expected by the organization. ClimateQual collects information about important organizational climates. It also collects information about organizational attitudes because these attitudes reflect um, the various state of the workforce in terms of its morale. Um, so we're not just looking at does the organization have the right climate to be in tune with its customers, but we're also looking to see what is the current health of the organization in terms of the workforce morale. So we actually get at information in two kinds of sources. One is from climate information, which tells us about do we have the right things to help customers, but also in terms of workforce morale to understand is this a healthy organization that can, can persist in producing customer satisfaction. All right, now I've been talking about health of organizations and organizational climate. The, the question comes like, what is a healthy organization? What do we mean by that? Well, that's a, a theory that we developed basically back in 2004, 2005, where we took some of the work dealing with the life cycle of organizations. And organizations actually do have a life cycle. They have a childhood where they're growing and developing. They have an adulthood where the organization meets its demands and continues to operate in a functional manner. And then some organizations experience the death cycle, in which case they are losing employees, losing resources, and can't meet the new demands of their customers. And like companies such as um, GM, who was saved by the federal government, but otherwise would have died, organizations can indeed be eliminated and we no longer see them. A healthy organization is one that actually maintains its um, part of in the adult cycle. And how does an organization maintain its experience as an adult cycle? It remains responsive to its environment. So a healthy organization is one that's responsive to its environment. It picks up what its customers want, customers in terms of faculty, undergraduate or graduate students, what kind of resources, what kind of content areas they want, how they want to gain this information, either in physical buildings and having hard copies or through electronic sources, as well as trying to anticipate the future needs of the customers so that the organization can start building certain content over, over the time. This cycle that we have shown here in this figure is what's called the attraction selection attrition cycle, also known as the ASA cycle, and it explains how uh, organizational climate comes about. You see we have the general population over to the left of the figure, and that indicates that in general uh, individuals that are part of the population are widely diverse. They're diverse in terms of their skills and abilities, they're diverse in terms of their interests and values and in their beliefs. Now we have the organization who actually has a particular need for new employees to come into the organization. And what we see is that from the grand population, only certain types of people are attracted to work in the library. So there's actually what's called a non-random sampling of people from the population. Those people who apply for jobs in libraries actually have a reduced diversity in terms of skills and abilities. Clearly, they trained to, to be effective workers in libraries. They have a reduced uh, set of 
values. It's restricted in terms of diversity. It's restricted in terms of interests. That's a natural consequence. And basically the non-random selection occurs because the individuals applying for the job are interested in the content of the job as well as the personality or climate of the organization. The organization doesn't take everyone who applies to it. It actually does a selection process trying to identify those individuals that appropriately fit into the library. Consequence of this, of course, is a further reduction in the diversity of values, beliefs, personality, etc. And finally, over time, certain individuals uh, leave the organization. Either they aren't working out and so they involuntarily leave, um, or they discover that they want to go elsewhere and try new organizations. So what we're left with as a result of the attrition process is that we have uh, employees working at the library who are increasingly similar over time as we go on to attraction, selection, and attrition. Now there's a positive aspect of this cycle in that it actually creates and reinforces organizational climate, which is what we talked about before. Organizational climate affects productivity and it affects and enables people to know how to behave in organizations and when they'll be rewarded for behaving in a certain way. The downside is that the attraction, selection, and attrition cycle increasingly reduces diversity over time. And what happens is if the organization reduces diversity too much, then we have found it no longer pays attention to its environment. It starts to just listen to the internal voices about how the library should perform and, no, and disconnects from what the faculty or the students are saying, its customer base. And it's this disconnection that we find is when organizations move into the death spiral. So the key here with um, ClimateQual is to measure particular climates which slow down the attraction, selection, attrition cycle so that we don't go into the period where the organization is no longer responsive. And here's a set of climate dimensions that are needed in order to slow down ASA. And this is indeed what is measured in climate qual in the long form version. There are nine climate scales. First, we have climate for deep diversity, as well as, second to the last one, climate for demographic diversity. What these do is they basically tell uh, individuals who are applying for the job and who are selected in the job that diversity is an important value in this organization and it has been shown to increase a diverse workforce um, and effective at attracting diverse workforce, which is very important to slow down the ASA cycle. Now, another particular climate that's important that's measured in climate call is the climate for justice. This is important because once people are in the organization, people from diverse backgrounds, the climate for justice in, enables the individuals to want to stay in the organization. It's not enough to just attract them. We have to keep them in the organization. Climate for psychological safety, the second one, is important because when people feel relatively psychologically safe, they take risks. And we have the individual who is willing to speak up in a meeting and to share an uncommon point of view. And so the climate for psychological diversity increases the likelihood that the organization will hear diverse points of view. Finally, we, while well, we also have the climate for innovation and the climate for continual learning, which determines the extent to which the organization can capitalize on learning about these diverse points of view and actually take action and change. In addition to this, we assess climate for leadership, 
which is extremely important for creating uh, these kinds of climates, and climate for teamwork as well. We finally, in the long form of Climate Qual, collect information about climate for customer service, because that's a direct measure of the extent to which the organization is trying to pay attention to what customers want. So those are the climate scales that are collected in the long form. In addition, the long form of climate call actually also collects the uh, employee morale information, or what's called attitude surveys. How engaged are people at the library? How committed are they? Do they exhibit organizational citizenship behaviors? In other words, this is the team playing aspect. Are they willing to help out their fellow coworkers when their coworkers are overwhelmed, but they have their jobs in hand. So do they pitch in? We also look at organizational withdrawal tendencies. Are people thinking about leaving the organization? We collect job satisfaction, team empowerment in the workplace, and work unit conflict. All these uh, attitudes basically look at um, the overall morale or health at the, from the employee's perspective. Now, we have had Climate Qual, uh, the long form, since 2007 and have um, applied it in lots of libraries since that time. We are now rolling out a short version of Climate Qual called Climate, Climate Qual Lite. And um, this version, basically focuses on the key components of the theory. Um, it says, okay, we want to get a quick assessment of how well the organization is doing in terms of being responsive to its employees. So one of the key things about Climate Qual Light is it decreases completion time, the uh, time required for your employees to complete it. We've actually run this in a, in a couple of libraries now in our pilot work with uh, several libraries, and we found that the median response time taken to complete Climate Qual Light is 13 minutes. In addition, the time saving produced by Qu Climate Qual Light does not hurt the quality of the data that we collect. It's still as reliable you can still use the actual normative base that we have created over time using the full version of Climate Qual. But yet, with Climate Qual Lite, you have access to all this information that has been built up over the time, this excellent normative information, while also reducing time to completion. Climate Qual Lite allows institutions, if they use it, to still get a good understanding of how um, the library is doing with regard to the major components of this healthy organization theory. Now, in terms of the um, statistical properties of Climate Qual and looking at, you know, what is the quality of the scales that we've developed, um, First of all, these are, like I said, this, these are based on theory. And so it's not just a collection of random items or scales that have been used by other individuals. We are basing it on a theory and have identified measures that actually test these factors. Uh, we have assessed the quality of the scales. And um, we actually have administered uh, Climate Qual full version as well as Climate Qual Lite um, through a total of 53 libraries. The majority came from the, U the United States, but we also started looking at cross-cultural work where we actually had four libraries coming from England and two from Canada. First thing we wanted to do is see whether the questions that are being used in Climate Qual, do they actually hang together? So that when we say, well, we have a climate for diversity, is that meaningful? Are the questions that were designed to assess diversity, do they um, basically give information so that you can be confident 
about the information? The answer, by the way, is yes. Through uh, a procedure known as factor analysis, we, we have evidence from the 53 libraries that our scales really do give uh, information about these themes. We also looked at the uh, reliability of this information. And we used a technique known as Cronbox Alpha. And the reliabilities are extremely high. Um, finally, we use the statistic known as an intraclass correlation coefficient, what's called an ICC. The purpose of this is to really determine the extent to which we're assessing organizational climate. If we are, these perceptions should be shared by people in organizations. And the ICC is a statistic that determines how shared are the perceptions within a library. If everyone has different perceptions, then we don't really, we're not really measuring a climate. So we need the ICC to be greater than zero. Here are some of the properties that we found from uh, ClimateQual Light. First of all, in terms of factor analysis, you'll see that all the scales substantially exceeded the required cutoff of 0 0.40. That's basically looking at how each item uh, is related to the overall theme. Basically, our scales are working. Our questions give us meaningful information about our measures. The internal consistency reliability, are we accurate with coming up with this information? The answer is yes. And in terms of scientific standards, our reliabilities are very nice, extremely at better than tip the minimum professional level. In terms of aggregatability, the extent to which do people in libraries share this meaning, share their understanding, uh, you see, with regard to the ICCs, um, the average in the field is 8.08. .08. We do exceptionally better. Our average uh, acceptable aggregation is at the 22 level. It's above the, what's traditionally found in the literature. Therefore, we have evidence that the climate qual light measures are providing the correct information in terms of the themes. They are reliable and accurate information with regard to the themes. And indeed, we have evidence that we are measuring climate. And so on the next slide, we have the conclusions. Climaqual light has desirable psychrometric properties. It measures organizational climate and not individual perceptions. And by the way, these conclusions apply to both versions, the light version and the um, full version. Here's a slide which actually shows the differences in terms of what's measured in the full version versus the climate qual light version. Uh, what I showed you before were all the climates that were measured in the full version. Here, what's bolded are what's measured in the light version. And you see these are the central components that um, are part of the organizational health theory. Notice we are including, and what I was referring to before, is we are looking at both deep diversity and surface, or what's called demographic diversity. The attraction selection attrition model is really concerned about both these types of diversities. On the next page, we look at the attitude measure. And here's you really see the difference in terms of climate qual light. It doesn't do, it's not designed to um, measure the uh, employee morale, except for job satisfaction, which is one of the major variables in organizational psychology. And that particular variable tells is very substantial and, and really tells, it's a good quick summary of organizational uh, morale. Overall, though, you have the information that's needed to know how well your organization is doing with regard to uh, um, the service quality. 
In order to get further sample questions about Climaqual, you can go to the website that's shown on the screen and you'll, you'll see uh, some of the various sample questions. By the way, before I go, I just want to say that we have completed our analyses of the um, Climaqual light and the test of the theory of the healthy organization. We have had substantial support for the model and we have just recently submitted a paper to the Society of Industrial and Organizational Psychology Conference. And we're going to be, I'm going to make that available to Climaqual on its website uh, later today. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Paul. That will be really great um, to have that in our publications database um, on the website. Um, and thank you so much for sharing these wonderful properties of um, Climate Qual Light. Um, I'll just take um, about a minute or two to um, discuss um, how we administer the survey and how we share the results with participants. Um, this is Shanika again. Um, and really quickly, this slide just summarizes um, the difference between the long form and the light form of climate qual. And you know, the take-home message is that basically climate qual light contains approximately 50% fewer questions. And our data at this point show that the response time, the median response time, is cut almost in half um, when you administer climate qual light in. Um, this is without compromising the um, integrity of the data that you receive, which is pretty great. Um, if you decide to administer climate qual, um, whether it's the long form or the light form, um, the survey looks at the library as a whole, and it also asks questions about respondents' individual team and work unit. Um, the light form has the comment box um, at the end of the survey um, where respondents can write comments about the library's climate that's present in the long and the light form. Um, and um, libraries need to be large enough to run the study and preserve the confidentiality of the respondents. And so we ask that participants survey at least 50 part-time or full-time employees, possibly including student workers. So that means that your library needs to have at least 50 part-time or full-time employees possibly including student workers in order to run climate qual so that the confidentiality of your respondents, of your staff, um, is preserved when running the survey. Um, the survey is web-based and is administered within the StatsQual platform which was developed by ARL. Um, and you should allow staff 10 to 20 minutes to complete the survey. As Paul mentioned, our um, Approximate survey response time is 13 minutes, and the survey typically lasts for three weeks. Um, as I mentioned a little while ago, um, respondent confidentiality is of paramount concern given the sensitive nature of the questions um, and responses on the survey. And so while we don't provide institutions with access to the raw data, um, we do provide an overview report that analyzes the mean scores for each scale by demographic group. Um, but data are not reported for groups that have too few responses. And the report contains comments from the participants. We do share those comments verbatim, but at the beginning of the survey, um, we let participants know up front that we will be sharing their comments and we encourage them not to self-identify when they write their comments. So we disclose that up front. And um, we have a number of ways that allow participating libraries to put their results in context. First, um, participating institutions um, can compare their results to the normative data which have been updated through 2013. Um, and participating institutions also um, are invited to a results review phone call with ARL staff um, so that we can go over the report with you. Um, and we also have a series of quarterly climate qual calls, which are a closed forum, so current and past participants only. And this forum is where libraries can share their experiences and inter the interventions that they've implemented in order to improve 
the library's climate. So we ask that you join us um, for Climate Qual. We're currently enrolling institutions for the remainder of 2014 and 2015. And if you're interested in um, running the survey, please email us at climatequal.org. We'd love to have you um, as a part of the Climate Qual family. And um, if you still have questions about the, the survey, the next two slides show resources for Climate Qual, and I'll just click through those quickly. Um, we have our informational video that um, features uh, the wonderfully engaging Dr. Paul Hanges, who spoke with you a little bit earlier in the call. We have our publications database, which is publicly available. You can go on and search and um, read publications about Climate Qual, and we'll put Paul's uh, paper that he um, submitted to the conference in the publications database. And then, if you do become a participant in the survey, you will have access to our um, shared workspace login, um, which has even more resources for survey participants. Next slide has a few more resources. And for those of you who have run LiveQual at your institutions, please take a look at um, Stephen Towns' presentation in the database um, that looks at uh, ClimateQual and LiveQual um, at, at his library. So thank you all so much for joining us for this presentation about ClimateQual Lite. We have about eight minutes um, before 1 o'clock. And so we'd love to take some of your questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to register for a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You will hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been answered and you would like to withdraw your registration, please press the 1 followed by the 3. You may also submit a question using the chat feature located in the lower left corner of your screen. One moment for the first question. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you'd like to register a question over the phone, please press the 1 followed by the 4. We have no phone questions at this time. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to um, just double check and see if there are any final comments before we bring the webcast to a close. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, again, if you have more questions about Climate Qual Lite or the long version of the survey, you can email us at climatequal at ARL.org. We look forward to hearing from you. And Thank you so much for joining us. Everyone have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude the webinar for today. We thank you for your participation and ask that you please disconnect your lines.